Four millennia ago, an ancient Babylonian wrote down what is possibly the first lullaby. It is a rather threatening lullaby, in which the baby is scolded for disturbing the house god with its crying and warned of terrifying consequences. It may have got the baby to sleep, but its message is far from comforting. If he or she does not stop crying, the demon will eat him or her. This lullaby may sound more scary than sleep-inducing, yet it is true that many lullabies, including those sung today, have dark undertones. Research has shown that lullabies, when used correctly, can soothe and possibly even help to heal an infant. But it is the caretaker's voice and the rhythm and melody of the music that babies respond to, not the content of the song. Then, what is the function of the content? According to studies, some lullabies provide advice, like the Babylonian lullaby, and quite a few others offer the space to sing the unsung, say, the unsayable. Lyrics to those lullabies can indeed be interpreted as a reflection of the caregiver's emotions. Researchers believe that a large part of the function of lullabies is to help a mother vocalize her worries and concerns. The mother's fear of loss especially makes sense since the infant or toddler years of life are fragile ones. Since there is a special physical bond between mother and child during this period, mothers feel they can sing to their child about their own fears and anxieties. Lullabies therefore serve as therapy for the mother. In addition, the songs are seemingly trying to work some magic, as if by singing, the mother is saying, Sadness has already touched this house. No need to come by again.